where we're at right now, we punch the dough, come out of fermentation, we pulled the sides in, into the middle, punched it down, we're gonna flip it over. Now I'm gonna cut this dough into about three even strips. I'm gonna use my bench knife for that. And the bench knife is not like a traditional knife in that you saw through the dough. It doesn't have those kind of teeth. You just push this through. That said, you gotta be careful because if you hit your fingers with this thing, you can tear some skin loose. We're gonna scale these at one and a half ounce units. So I'm gonna drop one up there, and I'm gonna judge how fast the, the, the scale drops. I'm not really waiting for it to stop, but I'm gonna judge how fast the scale drops. Now I hit that one right on the money, so I'm gonna put that down, and I'm gonna keep that my eye on that one every time I knock one off. Close enough. You know, the scale, uh, if I were to wait, it would take forever. So I'm not gonna wait. Sometimes I chip in, sometimes I chip out. My goal is nice, even units within an eighth of an ounce of each other. Next strip, it's about the same width, so the same size piece needs to be knocked off. things of a like kind all at once. Get in the habit of doing that. So I'm not going to stop and round every roll that I, I scale. I'm going to keep it going so that I can develop a bit of a rhythm in my scaling. Should get, I think it's about 36, 34. and columns. If you do that, you know at a glance how many you have and you'll know how many pans to prep. Otherwise, you've got to stand there and count. One, two, three. Take forever. Alright, the reason you've sat through this is so that we can talk about chipping in. Alright, so there's my original. Now this little piece of dough where you're not going to make some baby roll. If it's really close on weight, I'll go around and I'll knock a small piece off of a bunch of them to get this, this guy up to weight. But if he's a long way away, like this one is, I'm just gonna take him and chip him in. Knock him up into some little pieces and throw him onto just random rolls. Done with the scale. We'll work this oil into the table later. We don't wanna clean it off. Now we're gonna round. And this is the part that a lot of people have difficulty with, especially with small pieces. Round and you're just gonna take your hand and flatten it against the bench. And then you're gonna round in a circle. So you make a C and you round in a circle. I'm right-handed, so I'll start with my right hand. Take your dough piece, put your hand on top of it, and make a circle. There's your desired outcome. Let me show you what that looks like under my hand. So I'm gonna raise my hand, and what you'll see is that as my hand comes around, I capture just the edge of the dough. Just the edge under the knife edge of my hand, and that pulls that skin tight across the surface. The best way for a beginner to do that, put your hand on top, keep the knife edge of your hand down, your thumb down, and go real fast. It'll actually happen in spite of you, but you'll feel it. Once you get that feeling, then you want to switch to your non-dominant hand. And it's the same thing. The technique is the same. I'm going to put these over here so they're kind of out of the way. I don't want to put my stuff in the middle of the table. I might have something else to do while these are bench resting. What I'm not doing is this. It's not Play-Doh balls, okay? It doesn't work like that. You've got to smooth that skin on the surface. I want these to be tough as little rubber balls. 
So get your hand down, run that circle really fast, and if your table's rocking, put your hip against it, and that'll help hold it in place so you can do this. They shouldn't be rocking. There you are. Ultimately, I want to see you two-handed. That's productivity. Now again, if you're doing a lot of this, you're going to invest in a divider rounder. It's a machine that will divide the dough from a larger unit into 36 even units. Uh, what would that be in one and a half pounds? 36 and a half is 18, 40, 44, or 54, is it 54? 54 ounces, give me uh, 36 one and a half ounce units. And then if it's a divider rounder, you shove another lever and it actually does all of this for you. So you'll pull off 36 rounded dough units. And it'll do it even faster than I can ever do. It, even with two hands. I mean, like I said, it takes total time, about eight seconds to divide and round 36 pieces of dough. No one is that fast. No one. So the machinery is nice, it's expensive. Buy a brand new divider rounder, probably $15,000, maybe less, not much less. So you're gonna make that investment, you're gonna put that kind of money into your business, you're gonna wanna know you can get that money back. You better be a dinner roll to me. Making lots and lots of dinner rolls. Nice and smooth, I think it was a little under rounder. Now, if it's a bigger unit, you can use two hands, but the motion is the same. Okay, and everybody gets to that point where you just can't single hand round, so you use two hands, and that motion is the same. Now, I'm going to take my dough pieces, I'm going to throw a side towel over it. You can throw anything over it, you just don't want to skin to form, and I'm going to let that rest. 5, 10, 15 minutes, whatever it takes, until the dough is pillow soft. It goes from rubber ball hard to pillow soft. Done with my bowl, done with my scale, and I'm ready to start panning up. 